previously on the Wayfinders Guild. But you also see this odd patch of fog. And it's coming in again in the dock area. That fucking elf from the shooting range told me something about the docks. Starting to think there's no fucking coincidences in this city. Hello, uh, I am uh, Ilan Gould, and I am here to escort you into uh, to see the Empress. Ladies and gentlemen, and friends beyond the binary, <laughs> uh, the Empress of the Sylvan Empire, Catalina Gathias de Sylvan. You fought against undead creatures. Certainly seem to be. Yes. Face melting off, it was like. nasty. Nasty, like half the face, jaw hanging off, like you saw the jawbone. Like. So you described to us this um, unbound as spellcasters that um, disagree with the political climate of regulation and bureaucracy or whatever, but do you think them actually capable of being such monstrosities that they would commit acts of necromancy and vampirism and just wanton slaughter? I I know my friend back there. <laughs> it's so funny because you're seeing Mary just go <laughs> <laughs> out of the city you go, heading towards a new destination on a longer bound trip towards the village of Meyer Hall. Since leaving the capital city, you have been uh, getting to know each other a little bit better uh, in close confinements with this carriage ride down Talbot Road, which is a trade highway. It is one of the major routes for uh, artisans and for uh, people uh, getting all different um, supplies uh, to and from uh, the capital uh, region towards the west uh, into the more wilderness areas of the uh, Sylvan Empire. Over the course of two days, this travel takes you through several towns, uh, most of which are small hamlets and villages, nothing of any real significance, but plenty of uh, nice, friendly people within the empire no one giving you any mind as to your uh, arrangements with the Empire or with the Guild. Along Talbot Road, eventually you do make it to a supply town where you are able to refill on anything that you may need in terms of necessary components or equipment uh, that you have used prior. You also can mark off the equivalent of two long rests for anyone who is in need of recharging from any effects that they may have from previous uh, encounters. And after those two days of travel, it will be you will be arriving by afternoon to Meyer Hall, where you'll be meeting up with your contact from the guild that was set up by the Empress. So in those two days, is there the downtime? Is there anything that anybody 
really would have liked to have accomplished or is there anything that they feel like if any conversations are going to be held so luna was learning sylvan could they be now fluent in it after reading more i would say after two days uh <laughs> give me an give me an intelligence check okay you want it i'll do it here yeah, just roll roll your roll a regular intelligence check. We'll see how well you picked up. Okay. Um that's a 14. Um I would say uh that you you're not proficient in it yet, mm-hmm. but you definitely can pick up a few things. Um okay. it's easier for you to understand Arlen a little better when she's speaking natively than it is when you first met her. Okay. But yeah, at this point, you're just a bit shy of being prepared. Getting there. Okay. Anyone? Uh, um, during the time as we're driving and when I'm not driving the wagon, Iwaka would have been flying off intermittently at night to like hunt for small game animals to make like dried meat. Um, not using any bullets, mainly using the gu- mainly using the knife uh, to conserve ammunition for whatever is to come. Um, so during the evenings of these, he'll be like drying out this meat, skinning the animal, tanning the hides. So if anybody wants to have any potential discussions with him, like on an evening watch, I'm leaving that open to people's RP. Um, he wouldn't really be doing any skill related stuff. Actually, give me a survival check. Let's see how well you've done actually with this. Okay. Chicken die. Before he takes that check, I feel like Mary would definitely be trying to help him with that. Sure. So, roll with advantage. Roll with advantage, because that was a nine. You're welcome. And that is a dirty twenty-two. You clean 19. up pretty well. Um, the old habits of uh, growing up in the Westlands uh, don't fade, and you're able to uh, supply yourselves uh, with um, the necessities that you would find in the wilderness, much like you have learned uh, way back in your younger days. I will say if she's out with me hunting, I like I'm flying around like and diving down out of the air, just like on a dime. You would see him go and then go and then fly up again and fly away. And the reason he like made a handbrake stop and then make a U-turn is because what he saw in the grass from like up on high was a rabbit. So he just goes, um, maybe not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Distant cousins, distant cousins. <laughs> yeah, uh, even if even you notice that, you do understand that being uh, a herringon is much different than a rabbit in the material plane. As well, you're not too familiar with your own fey history. You do know that something is obviously different between you and a wild beast, <laughs> but you appreciate the gesture. But I'd like land back with like just a bunch of like raccoon, like a f- like two raccoons and a deer slung over my shoulder. I'm like, okay, I think we'd be pretty set up with some dried stuff for the rest of the night. <laughs> ah, trash pandas, I love them. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of gamey, but if you cook them in a stew, then they're decently flavorful. Oh, do we have carrots? Uh, I think we do. We might have. I think, I think we with st- a twenty, you found some vegetation. <laughs> and then I like pull. I like tied in my back is just some like swamp potatoes, like those weird blue potatoes. And I'm like, there aren't. They aren't too. They aren't too uh, pretty to look at. But you know, they go good to eat. Soup. Yeah, that's all you can do on the road. <laughs> I what, start eat? walking back. Well, you know, eat what you can find. Find what you can eat. Have you been on the road a lot? I've never been on the road. Oh, tons. I have been to every single asshole end of this continent, it feels like. <sighs> Explains I... why you were in Territalia. Yeah, mostly for money. I mean, I haven't really taken a pleasure vacation in a long time. Mostly it's been, this asshole is located in this town and he's done this thing. We are paying you this much money if he comes back alive. And I tend to bring him back alive. Luna walks over and she's like, Why are you talking about assholes so much? I'm talking about not 
because he is one. Ah. Respectfully, respectfully, respectfully. And then Luna just goes away. He just, they just <laughs> wanted to say that. That, that. that boy's got a... That boy's a couple of sprinkles short of a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Luna comes back. You have muffins? Oh, I don't know what he's talking about. We don't have any muffins. Over the next 12 hours... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, during Again, over the course of the two days, you're able to find plenty of supplies. Um, you do find, I will say, if anyone wants to uh, roll a nature check along the road. Sure, why not? Six! <laughs> You're not too much of a forest person, Awaka. Ten. I'm, I'm more paying attention to the sides of the road, not the forest itself. Just looking for any dark shapes, anything. Like, I've driven a wagon before. <laughs> yeah. I know how it Anyone works. Anyone roll higher than 10? I got a 14. Okay. Um, you, uh, Luna, tune in a little bit more into this wilderness. Uh, you've been raised, for the most part, in a temple half your life. And the other half sheltered, to say the least. So this is thrilling. This is... Beautiful. This is a, a a real. It's it's all the things that you are told to do during meditation, but you've only been able to do so in the hanging gardens. Beautiful. I noticed him kind of spacing out, and like from the top of the wagon, like he's poking his head out the window, <laughs> and I go, "Why don't you take a picture? It might last longer." Luna's going to choose to ignore that. Yes, it is, is... quite of a, an a, anachronistic uh, phrase. <laughs> All right. So um, with this last leg of travel, uh, with everyone resupplied and attitudes pretty for the most, uh, pretty much for the most part, conversational, basic, no real, nothing really intrusive in terms of what you've been through over the last couple of days. Intermittent snoring. Uh, or, DM just calls us basic. Or, or deep backstory cuts, not yet, at least. <laughs> uh, you finally make it to Meyerwood. Rain falls heavy on the small town. Rain clouds keeping most of the midday sun at bay. Half the buildings are differing stages of being boarded up, and the others look abandoned. The thick line of trees on the town edges casting a dark silhouette against the gray sky. The charming little town it seems to once have been has all but vanished as a feeling of dread has swept over this area. There is, um... Well, you know what? Everybody make a perception check as they get a lay of the land. We on uh, above BTT. With these, you just your regular dice. Okay. We only use the digital one for combat. That's a right, filthy right, right. twenty from Maring. That is a natural twenty from Finn. Ooh, natural nineteen for a twenty-four. Cool. That's, that's a two for a three. <laughs> or so that's a one. Yes. New leather. I rolled a one. You're six it's four a nine. negative one disadvantage. So yeah. Arlen is Arlen's still asleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Happily. Twenty three total for what it's worth. So definitely with the twenties and above, um, you uh, notice that it's just it, it's it's not fog or mist, but it's certainly post uh, like morning rain. Uh, that that weird warm. Uh, just dampness that comes from an afternoon spring rain. Uh, and it has this malaise over the town. There is um, a boarded up general store. There is a boarded up blacksmith. There's a boarded up a pot. A lot of the shops just look like they're straight up closed almost permanently. Um, the one thing you do see is that there is a, uh, a church with the um, uh, Finn, you would recognize 
just from um, your religious studies that it is a church of Lathander. There is um, one, uh, there is a smokestack coming from one building, which is the Rook's Rest Inn. There is also a tower that is probably the most significant looking building there. And if you had to take a guess, that looks like a tower a wizard would be handling themselves in. And pulling up your cart, you see that there is a small piece of paper on the front door of the wizard's um, front door. <laughs> um, Awaka hops off the cart, just getting a lay of the land and looking around suspiciously because he would have probably have been through Meyer Hall before. Just yeah, through. this is a depressing site. This used to be a nice trade town. I, uh, what would I know about uh, Lathander? Should I make a religion roll for that? Uh, yeah, if you could do a religion roll for that. That's a uh, nine. One thing you know of Lathander is that it is known as the Morning Lord. As in, not sad morning, but literally the time of day. Morning, Lord, morning, Lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, I walk up to the, the door of the wizard's cottage, and I rip the paper off, and I take a read. Uh, it just simply says, um, uh, knock if a uh, door is closed. If no answer, find me at the tavern helping. And then it kind of trails off. It seems like this thing was written in a rush. I look back at everybody in the cart, and I just go, What's it say? Yeah. It says knock if the door is closed. Is knock. the door closed? Then knock. The door is closed. Knock. Say. <laughs> the note flies uh, out of your hand at that point and like kind of flutters away like a uh, like like bird wings towards the um, the uh, Rook's Rest Inn. What, did you lose a feather there? But your I didn't cousin. Know did that. Is someone uh, home? I think our wizard likes drinking, and I kind of hitch up the horses to where the tower is, and I start to walk, following the floating piece of paper like a missing sheet of music in Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure uh, it didn't mean like knock? No. Like <laughs> knock, and she like, sh- like she strums the chord, and all of a sudden there's magic in her hand. You sparkly magic. Do you mean like knock, knock? Like I, I could just open it. He's at the tavern. Follow me. Interestingly enough, when yeah. you do your um, magical uh, cord strum, you do see that the door handle uh, on the door uh, disappears, and then the wood starts to become stone. So the door right. essentially becomes what this wall looks like behind you. Yeah, I, think that's not a, I don't think that's it anymore. Go to the tavern. All right, that's fine. We probably should wake up Arlen first, though. <laughs> well, Arlen. And she says in Sylvan, get up. <laughs> I'm going to hop off and start following the walk. And as, as I hop down, I'm just going to... Yeah, I have a feeling that he's probably not the person that we want to uh, be leading this. After waking up Arlen, Marin's gonna hop after Finn and hop right on his shoulders. <laughs> he just like rolled over. <laughs> um, so, a carved wooden sign of a raven is hanging above the door. Inside, there is uh, a group of. Um, it looks like a disheveled. Maybe. Uh, not the. the most. Uh, it's. it's this seems like it's a, a soup kitchen now, more so than it is a tavern. Uh, there is a middle-aged woman um, who has been... Uh, you, you overhear uh, people calling her Talia. She is uh, handing out, you know, with a ladle, some nice soup. Uh, it's a very lovely smell. It's a, a nice uh, stew. Um there is another person, a human uh, man uh, named Callum, 
that she addresses who is helping her out. And it looks like this uh, this is just kind of helping the um, the poor folk in this area at the moment. And on the other side is a uh, elderly gentleman, very much the stereotypical wizard of a longer grayish beard, longer hair, kind of uh, silk, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, like a linen like cap that kind of hangs to the side. And um, he is uh, in his uh, very simple robes, uh, just assisting um, those in need around the tables and helping uh, provide for different ones. But he does uh, stop and keeps going back to uh, one uh, gentleman who's very ragged looking. He's got a hood up over his face and he's just barely touching the soup and he's just kind of like and you see, and you kind of figure, eh, that might be who you're looking to talk to. We'll walk up, since he would have been ahead of everybody, kind of like walks into the tavern very much in the s- stereotypical like Old West, just pushing the door open and standing in the doorway and just shifting his eyes around until he catches the the elder gentleman and walks over just clink like a piece of paper just flutters by again goes right onto his shoulder and then just crumples down and he goes oh well you must be my contacts (laughs) yeah mean about uh hello oh they're already here we come by way of come by way of Marray. yes yes I have been told um if you wouldn't mind giving a few hands before we get ourselves uh, situated, uh, we uh, seem to be uh, understaffed today. Um, usually our volunteers that uh, we expect during this time of day, well, they become fewer and fewer. Uh, and, and, and we could use a few extra assistants if you don't mind. Uh, I will be sure to get your names and uh, our formalities out of the way in time, but if you don't mind, just for the moment. No, of course. Uh, sure. No problem. And um, you guys can all make a perception check if you want. That's a natural 20 for a 24. That's a hot 11. <laughs> it's hot. Ah, it's hot and hot. Uh, lukewarm 13. <laughs> ice, ice cold, ice cold uh, nat one, <laughs> plus three for for a four. I'll go for the, the the really high and the really low and the difference. Uh, Luna, you've never been in this environment before. <clears throat> you've, you know, done missionary work to a degree, but never something so real and so non. Um, organized and this is a very very strong glimpse into what life is like outside of the major cities in the uh, Sylvan Empire especially along these border areas of the peninsula Um, Maring the uh, grumpier gentleman that uh, your wizard contact was uh, trying to assist He definitely catches your eye uh, as, you know, you've been on such a roll lately with helping people. You think, maybe maybe this this is somebody else I can help. He's got his hood up. His clothes are ragged. His face is just sagging. His beard is disheveled. His eyes are almost like a milky white in their pupils. He, he, he's just, he looks miserable and he certainly is not presenting himself much more than um, just being cranky, but at least being grateful he's inside. Okay, well, um, <clears throat> while the wizard's kind of like probably giving us some pointers of what we're going to be doing, Maring totally just blinks out, zero in on this dude, hops off of Finn's shoulders, um, and just will kind of like, like kind of, you know how like a toddler tries to get your attention by getting under yeah. your vision. <laughs> she kind of does that. He's just like pushing the soup around. And... She kind of looks at the soup, kind of sniffs it. Good soup. Not bad smelling. Yeah. Can I help you? 
Well, I was going to ask the same thing. And she kind of hops onto a chair next to him. You good, my dude? You don't look good. I've met a creature like you before. you never seen a rabbit before? Oh, I've seen a rabbit. But uh, yeah. not um, you. <laughs> not a big rabbit. I don't know proper way to say politely. I've never met talking humanoid rabbit. Really? Huh. There's a couple of them are from, and I, I guess, um, anyway, uh, you look disheartened. Just wondering if you needed someone to talk to. Perhaps a rabbity stranger, shoulder to lean on, something like that. You are young and full of good intentions. Very clear. But uh, my problems are perhaps more advanced than something you can. <coughs> than you so kind of like pat his shoulder when he I, coughs. Thank you. When you pat his shoulder, you feel these like nubs on his in his shoulder blades. It's like padded though. You couldn't tell from like the very large jacket that he's wearing with his, with his ragged hoods. But just feeling it, it's like this moment where, and he notices that you feel kind of like those bone spurs. Mm. Don't, don't worry. It's, um, one of many things I've lost in life. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going on with his shoulder, man, but I may be young, but you see this dude? And she points over to Awaka. He's real old. And he should totally, like, this whole group, like, I, I may be the young one, but I think together we may be able to help you out. You know? It's kind of what we do. <laughs> I, like, I hear her call me old, and I go, I'm 27. I already told you that. <laughs> what? No way. No way. Are you just... Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But and as you come and join uh, Maring to assist this very haggard old gentleman in this uh, in the in what is now become a soup kitchen, he looks at you and notices the symbol of Bahamut on you. And that's my friend Finn. He's super cool too. Really oh. good at helping people. Finn, are you? Uh... You are a man of faith. That I am. I once was like you. I would not put so much trust in trinkets like such. The trinkets aren't what you should be putting faith in. The faith comes from within. <laughs> I had faith once. I already tell friend your friend here. I lose many things and faith became largest, but certainly not most painful. Well, hopefully we uh, we can help kind of restore some faith, and who knows, maybe even some uh, something around here. <laughs> she pats his shoulder again. <laughs> when you do, the protrusion on the back. It it, and I don't know if if anyone else is watching. I am. Yeah. Like from afar. Who is paying kind attention? Of notice that those are, that that's definitely, wing movement from bone. I like, walk up, to this person like he's at a he has a hood on. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of I kneel down. For, for purposes. <laughs> and I look yeah. at, like I don't see the front of his face and I look him in the eye and I say in Era Cochran <laughs> I wish no but I once had wings beautiful wings my wife called me her personal angel Aww. 
Would I re- would I recognize what kind of person this is since he's not Eric Cochran? Just making the kind of t- and... like would I know what an ASMR is? Well, you could tell me. Has have you ever met an ASMR? I have. Then you would know. <laughs> DM. Yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, but DM, do you think any ASMRs would find their way into the grad- gladiator ring? This episode is powered by Poddex. Poddex are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts in the palm of your hand. So whether you're a new podcaster or existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience and have more meaningful conversations, you're going to want to check out Poddex. Now, if you want to get 10% off your order right now, you can go to poddex.com and type in coupon code, what's the code? Yes, that's the code. Check out poddex.com. Take your podcast to the next level. He notices that there are now like several more of you just all suddenly gathered around. Why why am I special charity case today? I don't yeah. think of it as charity. I just think, you know, down on your luck and yeah. I'll help you out, man. Luna um is gonna pull the jawbone out of their bag. I mean like uh, seems like you're having some bone issues. Uh put that away. I'm just, just saying it might Luna. help. It might help. Don't it's mind. unsanitary, man. Don't, no, I don't, washed it. Don't mind him. He's uh, never been wash outside. It. <laughs> it's disrespectful to do that to the dead. Don't. Oh, well. All right. Everybody, I think we're supposed to be serving soup. He I can't really be the only here. person doing this. Luna, why do you have your thing out? Come on, serve soup with me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, before I go off with them to help them with soup, I kind of lean down and I just go... You know, uh, I haven't seen many of you outside the inner parts of Mare, or the inner parts of the continent. No, there are. I can assure you, there are none like me anymore. Let me ask you something. And you too, young, uh, dragon believer. You've seen battle? Seen war. The scar. I kind of look at. He's talking to Finn, right? He's talking to all of you. Yeah. Oh, I kind of look at Finn with a side eye, and then I look back to him, and I go, "Our own versions of battle." I guess you can say that. He looks directly at your eyes, Finn. You know that only the dead know the end of war. You're right on that account. Make an inside check. If you don't mind. Both of us or just him? Just Finn right now. Okay. Ooh, that's a five. High five. It, it just kind of shakes you the way he said that so reassuredly. But you are a apologist. You do not need to hear all of this. You go help the uh, magic man. Um, oh, okay. Arlen, um, are you at this point? What's up? Arlen. Um, she probably, having, having been asked to help, she would have immediately jumped in. And if Andy is serving soup, then Arlen would have been repairing stuff using mending at any opportunity so if anyone has any ripped tattered clothes she would have been helping with that or any objects even if in the kitchen there are broken soup bowls and mugs and such so you are doing this and a moment happens where something kind of 
pings off in your mind. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a sense you've only had when in certain environments. And it, it doesn't, it, it goes away pretty quickly. It, it just, it's weird that in this particular area you had that kind of sense go off at the moment. Good sense, bad sense. I will message you. <laughs> okay. At whatever sense, her tail would have twitched. Yeah, I think it, I think it like 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 it's, it's not it's like it's, a, it's, 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 it's like it's not like a voracious yeah. whip, but <laughs> kind of a little like a whip. Um. Yeah. Out a lot of them. And uh, he he gets he kind of gets up abruptly. You you help help these you help these people the way you can help or the way that you think you can help them. He says that to you, Finn. Wait, friend, I friend. Kind, I I kind of just grab him. I kind of like kind of ha- hold him by the shoulder and I pull him in close and I go. Listen, brother, I know eventually we're going to have to deal with whatever's been doing this to this place. I've been through here before, and this is a shadow of what I've seen. Now, I know your folk, and for something to do this, and I, like, kind of let one hand, like, kind of tap the edge of the nub of the wing bone, for something to do this to one of you, Taking a lot of power and a lot of fighting, so lay it on me straight. How serious are we looking at here? <laughs> you don't know. <clears throat> Only the dead, no peace. He puts it side up. He walks out the door. Before he walks out the door, um, Maring would go, Hey, friend! Can I get your name? I'm Maring. Draven. Draven. I have a feeling I'll see you soon. I hope not. <sighs> and I... Um... Real quick though, Finn. Having heard that name, can you give me a history check? Ooh, that ain't gonna be good, but I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see my Surpri- reply back to you, Michael? Yes. Surprisingly enough, that would be an eighteen off of a nineteen with my Ooh. negative one. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay. First, I will tell Finn, and then I will get to Arlen. Yep, Boy, nice. secrets. Secrets, secrets, secrets are, are no fun. fun. Until you they tell the them about everyone. everyone. Yeah. Are, there any, are there any children in here? Uh, there are uh, some young kids who are um, either uh, children of the people assisting or um, uh, one or two uh, kids coming in who are probably also homeless. So um, while I'm serving the soup and doing whatever they're asking, whatever else they're asking me to do, um, can I? Um, I would like to start singing a song, um, like a children's song uh, called Pahoot. Okay. Which okay. is can Luna which, join in? Yeah. So it's a song. It would have been a song. Well, let me him <clears throat> Luna. Remember that song Pahoot from from uh, when we were kids? Of, of course. Yes, I love that song. <laughs> it really oh, is funny. <laughs> um, right. One so, um, <laughs> yeah. So, I want to sing the song Pahoot, which is a, it's a, um, it, it is a kid's song. It makes parents really not incredibly pleased because it's about a flatulent gobli- goblin. Um, <laughs> so, I want to try and lighten the mood while I'm <laughs> serving soup and start singing this song Pahoot. All right. Just for flavor. Okay, can you uh, entertain us with that while I whisper another message? <laughs> while that is happening, Awaka's like helping move boxes and stuff, but he kind of like watches both of them play. And he like, 
sees like Andy distracting the children and he kind of goes, <laughs> and he like keeps going at his task, like finding himself lingering a little bit too long and just also like eyeing up the patrons here to see if he notices any like visible injuries. Cause he, cause he noted the, the wings being broken off the ASMR gentleman. And he wants to see if there's any like similar injuries to what certain undead aspects might cause. Like the ones they saw in Mare, just slashing, gashing, bite marks, anything like that under bandages. Uh, give me an, Hmm. Are you trying to do this subtly? Just observation and like helping people, like bringing them bowls of soup, just like glancing. Okay. Not, uh, not too deep, but just like maybe blood, yeah. just blood smears and stuff like that. Yeah. Just give me investigation. All right. Space die. Keep an eye specifically for those types of marks. That's 14. Yeah. Um, it seems as though uh, a lot of the anything that is, it's nothing that you were looking for. Um, but it certainly is. People are in poor health and poor condition in general here. I kind of like see a kid like eyeing me up because he probably has never seen a giant bird man before. And I kind of cock eye at him and I like bend down to him and I go, what's the matter? You ain't see a guy with feathers before. He kind of hides behind the adult and just kind of smiles a little. Well, hey. I kind of like lift up my arm and like at the like the lowest point of my armpit where the wing connects, there's like a bunch of feathers that are about to like molt or fall off and I just go ah! and I like <laughs> take out a, like a, a feather and I hand it to him and I go here. So now your friends will believe you. Scampers off. <laughs> uh, Cherise, the wizard, uh, eventually shows up. Ah, good, wonderful. Oh, where is your tall furball friend going to? As he watches Arlen start to walk off, it seems. I don't know. I'll be right back. Arlen? And I go to follow her outside mm -hmm. i'm guessing arlen yep. you uh as you have told me uh your senses are telling you to head towards the church okay as sharice is starting to follow oh, oh what's it well, well i mean that is where i was going to be talking about but please if we make please Ar arlen arlen <laughs> this is not this is not the only time you've walked off suddenly what's going on there uh there is something that is uh, not right in that in that direction. It is um, <sighs> more dead. It's uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel right. It <sighs> something's awake. I kind of like look around now that we're outside in the town square. And like, do I notice like anybody like specifically watching us than just scuttling off? Kind of like that feeling of like. No, it doesn't seem like there's any outside eyes on you. Um, Cherise is the only one who's kind of uh, confused at the moment as to why the the this is happening. <laughs> Look, I understand that you got a feeling about these things, but we need as much information as we can get before we go in there. Because if there are more of those undead things. We gotta be prepared. All right. But what if it goes away? What What if I cannot find it again? I kind of look back towards the church. Do I get any kind of, like, just you know, like a vibe check sort of off of it? Like I can tell hey, that something's off. Check. Okay. Give me a vibe check. Roll for vibe check. Roll for vibe check. <laughs> check. Uh, that's 13 plus 2, 15. I mean, if the aesthetic of a creepy old church in a rainy <laughs> town uh, <laughs> surrounded by a graveyard wasn't enough to give you the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> <sighs> I can understand why. And trust me, if it were any other time, I probably would go over there with you two. But if we're supposed to be a team on this, then we better listen to what this old guy has to say. 
and I kind of gesture towards Cherise, who's like looking at us from the entrance of the pub. Yes, yes. Um, if if you if you don't mind, um, I, I, I can make the, the. It's much more comfortable to discuss things indoors than it is on uh, you know, out here in this particular weather. I mean, it's. And I go over. I assume the cart, the wagon that we were traveling in, is relatively close to parked. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. it's by the wizard's oh, tower. Okay, it's all within close proximity. Yeah. Okay. She will go over there, <laughs> lift up the bench seating, and pull out her her spear, her mace, and her shield. Oh, I see. She's come prepared. <laughs> Shit. You didn't, oh, have any we- you didn't have any weapons when we met you. It's going to be that kind of a party. <laughs> no, um... Oh, well, I should they, um, <laughs> they... They, um... Where, where I come from, they, um... I didn't bring them, but, uh... They sent them along with me in case something happened at the festival. I mean, there th- nothing was supposed to happen, but then... Mm, too sick. Mm, um, and, and I kind of like, that. I kind, I kind of like indicate that maybe we, we even hold, hold it on the, um, on the hand signals to indicate. <laughs> but I, I didn't say anything. It says, mm. it's still in secret. But right. I figure if they sent them along, I might as well wear them and maybe it'll help certainly can't hurt to be prepared so mm-hmm. just remember you can only use you can't use the all three of them at the same time I mean <laughs> her That'd tail is currently holding the mace Pukwapa. well fuck me alright I don't know <laughs> <laughs> whoa your tail can do that she looks at her little bunny tail <laughs> it's just like there, it's none. <laughs> no movement. She goes, oh, damn it. <laughs> All right, old man. Uh, it, sure, is. <laughs> sure. I may Reese. May get your names, please. Um, Did you guys on. move back in the tavern? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So when you guys walk it, sorry, when you guys walk back in the tavern, you hear. Uh, you all know that it's a lost art to be at the last laugh when you let rip a big fart. And Marin goes. All the kids just like. Perfect. Oh, perfect. And that's an exclamation point. So uh, that's a point of inspiration, actually. That's what that is. Yay. <laughs> Arlen just quickly slips on the rose colored glasses just to see Joy the effect it has on the room. Where? <laughs> Yay. Except for Awaka. Well, no, <laughs> no. Actually, actually, if she would have seen her through the rose color, seen me through the rose colored glasses, at the end of the song when she like hits the note, there was there was a brief smirk and maybe a light glint of flash, flash like a quick little, f- mm-hmm. and then it like would go away real quick. And some say the <laughs> the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that big. <laughs> <laughs> You're, oh, you're back now okay okay sorry kids sorry sorry i gotta i gotta i gotta go but you're great 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 singing great singing i'll be i'll be back in a little bit okay one of them just has a big ass feather behind his head. yeah <laughs> marrying will hand off the ladle to the other volunteer and hop on over because she just like farted into her elbow with her mouth and spit in some of the soup and they're just like yeah. just go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on accident <laughs> I was like, what? L- Luna's still like blowing bubbles in a cup like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, oh. in their chocolate like, milk yeah, in their <laughs> somehow Luna's found chalky milk <laughs> <laughs> so she gathers you to a table and he uh, after exchanging names and information and all the uh, sorts of uh, how you came uh, it's into the employment of the Empire, um, which I'm sure you give a very brief and not fully detailed description at all, but knowing that you are guild members is enough for him. Uh, I, I dare say this is certainly guild-affiliated business. Um, 
there is a feeling that something is, something has, something has stirred beneath the church of Luthander, uh, north of here. Uh, Father Bracken, uh, who was, uh, as well as a number of townsfolk, um, they've vanished inside. More townsfolk have gone missing since. Been no trails of blood leading down the path north into the woods towards the church. Uh, you are the only ones who know this um, at this moment. And I could uh, vent, uh, venture a guess that you'd be willing to go inside to perhaps investigate on such matters. This town was once known as Ashwood, mainly for a, an unfortunate forest fire that happened. But from the ashes and cinder, the town rebuilt. In fact, most of the wood that is making up these buildings is built from those trees that were salvaged. But eventually, as time went on and weather changed and roads were paved and tra trade brought in all sorts of industry. A, uh, the town became Maya Hall as a bit of a well a, a dour name towards this town. It became at first a bit of a mockery and after the old estates that had built this town had seemingly left. They took their money with them, and with such left it in a bit of a financial ruin, and we are ever since picking up the pieces. The Church of Lathander was, and has been, a beacon of hope for many who have found respite here in Mirewood, and see something as disturbing as this come along, it is. And it's quite... I don't get scared too often with the things that I am able to deal with, but there is an unsettling presence. I feel that if you have all collectively been sent, then it means that you have some sort of specialty with it. I hope that uh, you are able to figure this out all for, for our sakes and for these people's sake. Their, uh, our old store owner, Baron. <laughs> Current stern, but kind. He has identified many for mostly the scars on his skins from his old days of adventuring. He, uh, one day was gone. Burgess, our blacksmith, Elsia, she was a shop owner. They are all very close-knit community of people, and then suddenly they were gone. Father Bracken along with them, one by one. Two weeks ago, we closed the church after realizing that perhaps Father will not be returning anytime soon. We were allowing access at night for you all, as during the day there is uh, an allowed uh, permission of service and uh, general use of the church grounds, nothing more than the uh, temple inside, and certainly nothing further into the crypts or into any sort of graveyards or ceremony rooms. But you are, uh, you're expected to at least to in inspect as best you can, find some answers. Hopefully we will not have to uproot an entire town if there is evil to be rid. Do you have any questions on the matter at hand? Uh, yes. Yeah. What about the the things that were found on the road? 
Oh dear, yes. Well, um, a, a young group of, um, carefully looks, unbound. They were, uh, something attacked them, or we believe they perhaps were approached and they were simply coming by looking for a place of sanctuary. And one night, one night they went off screaming into the woods, off of Talbot Road, and something horrid was discovered. The last place they were seen. I dare not speak the the remains of what was left. I wish that upon no one. Did you see what the beast was, by any chance? What we found were footsteps of blood, and then all leading to one site where and he's, you can see he's starting to get nauseous just from the mere... I'll keep it light in saying that we found them all together at one unfortunate space. What was left of them? Were there... Were there mists? Black and red, red. mists? There were nights of ill weather, for sure, over the past two weeks or so, and this is a time during the season where our moons would have the red haze over from the solstice sky, but... They seem alive. What my companion here is trying to elaborate on is we were told that one of these said creatures were vanquished and turned into a vaporized black and red mist. And the blood itself? I'm not sure. We think we did find something that is similar in terms of when the daylight came, the blood footsteps did dissipate and sort of burn a bit more on the dawn. That might be it. Would I know of any creature whose blood reacts like this? Give me an arcana check. Okay. <sighs> Not a terrible bonus of a plus zero. All right. Natural 20. Okay. Cool. If you had to take a guess, and you've seen some creepy stuff in your time, you've come across a lot of different things. Whenever it comes to what has always been in lore and stories and tradition as the supernatural, that tends to line up with things that are infernal in nature. Okay. So that's one of three things confirmed, at least. What are you talking about? I was on a job one time where we had to deal with a gentleman who was claiming to uh, claiming to make people feel young again, have their blood revitalize themselves, and. They would come from being old and looking young, but then three days later, their hearts would explode out of their chest. So I was sent to find this guy, and it turns out he wasn't a normal wizard at all, but a minor devil, a demon in disguise. I had to go in there with a bunch of mercs to take him out. Motherfucker was tough as a tick. But one thing I do remember is that his blood reacted to daylight pretty violently. Uh, 
Was... Uh, was anything... written? It, or it, was there a message? Was there... <sighs> this seems out of pure chaos. It seems feral. It seems... unholy. And I... am a man of... Multiverse of faiths. And the strange phenomena that comes across uh, as a guild member and one of investigation specialties is a most common form of occult wonder. When I have searched into things like this, of a dim phosphorescence that is hovered above the ground where dead are buried. I, uh, a, uh, a doctor uh, was, um, that I had studied, referred to it as, uh, as grave lights. Quite poetic, but it's um, mostly seen as a phenomenon of large cemeteries or Top hills or fields, uh, often prior to storms. And with the rain that we have received lately, it on the night of winter solstice, where the moon remains unvisible to any form of perception. It is a phenomenon amongst locals who believe in this sort of ordeal as the darkest night. Now, there is some theory and lore behind it that's saying that it has something to do with undead rising. But it is, it just does not seem, I don't believe in coincidence. And I fear that as we perhaps get closer, this unnatural phenomenon, of which you have discussed too with these mists, as it were, this creeping fog, this fog. I hope that the two are not connected, but if they are, it will help point us in the right direction. I apologize, I don't have quite the stomach for this sort of discussion on the long term. At the mention of Undead Rising, Arlen's knuckles would have, her fists would have clenched and her knuckles would have gone whiter. We will kind of like make sure Arlen's all right. Mm -hmm. I hope you're relieved. You oh, sorry. Just quickly to Luna, would have asked, do you happen to have any uh, ginger on you? A friend might need it. Ginger? Mm -hmm. It's good for nausea. Oh, sure. Maybe in the kitchen. We'll go check. Some tea. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> um, Luna will go and kind of whip up some, like a kettle. Well, you guys also do know that. Maring is a big fan of food, and she did pick up snacks in the last town she was in. So, uh, don't hey, know if you heard that. Part of it. If you heard that, by all means. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Luna will just go over to Maring and be like, could you, could you mm -hmm. make some ginger tea? Ginger tea. Ginger, ginger. And she just like scuffles <laughs> through her bag. Do I have ginger? Do you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be a dick about it. To Luna. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank for you. Ginger. <laughs> Roll for ginger. Roll we'll for take ginger. It. We'll take it and, and just like kind of... Wait, wait, draw. not all of it. I eat too nope. much. And she like breaks it in half. And all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. He, um... After, as he gets some composure, he lets you know about the uh, the path to the uh, the actual church, which is further north from here. Uh, other than the small chapel where the, where the very small graveyard is. That seems to be the kind of stand-in church of Lathander 
for the site that you have been asked to investigate. And as he directs you towards there, just so you have an idea of the area, he takes a step back and gives you permission and and tells you all that he will... uh, If you are in need of him, you can find him in the tower at night, but he believes you have all that you need in terms of uh, preparation. The water seeps through the mud into your boots as you exit a little bit out the edge of town along the road northward, choked by trees to either side and their canopies above, blocking most of what little sunlight penetrates the clouds, but doing little to ease the rain. An eerie quiet hangs over the woods here. You can't shake the feeling of being watched. Following the path, you see the occasional smear of dried blood across cobblestones. Before long, the trees thin out, and you see the church ahead in ruins, as if it was from a fire. Doors broken and burned, windows smashed, gravestones litter the area in front of the church, bordered by a low stone wall that the path cuts through the front doors. This is the church of Lathander, deserted and half destroyed, it seems. Next time on the Wayfinders Guild. Y'all hear that? As you glance over, you see a form rising from the mud beside a gravestone. Can I roll to seduce the zombie? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure like zombies are not supposed to be able to do that. Am I the only Ooh, one that nine. didn't vomit? <laughs> Marin didn't vomit. I definitely didn't vomit, but uh, certainly but not she... stoked. And um, you maneuver, you know, you're, you try to get your weight underneath the, you know, to both of your knees now are onto the floor. You hear. <laughs> Um, can everyone make a dexterity saving throw, please? 